Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G A, and today we are going to uh, learn how to find complex solutions to quadratic equations. So a quick warm up for you guys, so please pause the video and give this a try. And when you're ready, hit play to check your answers. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Uh, so intercept form, you're essentially just factoring. Um, and then here's your answer. And then for the vertex form, remember you need to complete the square to create that binomial squared. Um, so just be careful here. Um, the number that completes your square is 9 fourths, but you're actually adding 9 twelfths to each side. And then when you factor this, it becomes x minus 3 over 2 squared. So here's the um, vertex form. Um, so today we are going to be again solving uh, quadratic equations. So when you're solving a quadratic equation, th there are three types of solutions you could expect to get. So you might get um, a scenario where you don't have any real solutions, so you actually have two imaginary um, solutions. That's one scenario. You might have a scenario where you get one real solution, and you might have a scenario where you get two real solutions. So those are the three scenarios um, that you'll encounter when we are solving quadratic equations. So there are a lot of different methods um, that you can use to solve a quadratic equation. Um, each one kind of has its pros and cons and um, times when you can use it and times when you can't. Um, so we're going to review these four today. So for the square root method, um, we're going to isolate x squared um, completely, then take the plus or minus square root of both sides, and then of course simplify. Um, the one downfall of this method is it doesn't work if you have an x term in addition to the x squared term because you can't isolate x. Um, another way uh, you can solve a quadratic is by factoring. Um, so you set your equation equal to zero, you factor, and then um, you use the zero product property. Um, but please remember that not all equations are factorable. Um, sorry, this is supposed to say factorable. Um, so um, this isn't always a method that you will be able to use, but if it is factorable, I'd say this is usually the quickest and easiest way to solve a quadratic. Uh, the next method we will review will be completing the square. Um, so for this, there is a little formula to find what I call the magic number. <clears throat> and so this formula you need to know, um, you find it with b over 2 and then squared. We'll review the whole process um, in a few minutes. And then the last is the quadratic formula, which of course looks like this. And then I do just want to point out um, the, the portion that's inside our radical, that b squared minus 4ac, this has a name. Um, it's called the discriminant. And we are going to talk about um, what we use the discriminant for today um, as well. Okay, let's get started. Um, so we're going to start with um, a quick review of that square root method. Um, so our first uh, uh, step here is going to be isolating x squared as much as we possibly can. So here we can um, start by subtracting 24 from each side and then dividing each side by negative 2. And now from here we can take the plus or minus square root of both sides. Uh, please don't forget that plus or minus because if you do you're losing half of your answer. And then from here we're just going to simplify so we get x equals plus or minus 2 root 3. And there you have it. Um, let's try another one together. So again, isolate as much as you can. And then we're going to uh, multiply by 5 and divide by 3. So x squared equals negative 100 over 3. Um, now from here, again, we're going to take the plus or minus square root of both sides. So here um, is a case where we're going to have um, two imaginary solutions because we have that square root of a negative. So again, we don't just we no longer say no solution. We're actually going to continue working with our imaginary numbers. So uh, we can start by um, simplifying that that negative by putting an i out front, and then we can simplify this radical further. So we know that the square root of uh, 100 is um, 10. So we have plus or minus. 10i over root 3. And then last, we do need to rationalize our denominator um, because we can't leave a uh, radical in our denominator. So I'm going to multiply by root 3 over root 3. We get plus or minus 10i root 3 over 3. So we have two 
imaginary solutions. And again, um, this method, the square root method, works great when you just have an x squared term, but if you have um, an additional x term, uh, you won't be able to use this method. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and give one of these a try on your own, and we'll check your answers in just a few seconds. Okay, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so after we've isolated completely, we get x squared equals negative 7 over 2. Um, so we take the plus or minus square root, and then we do need to simplify. So the square root of negative 7 becomes i root 7. So we can write this as plus or minus i root 7 over root 2. Um, and then here we just need to rationalize our denominator by multiplying by root 2 over root 2, giving us our answer of plus or minus i root 14 over 2. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our next method, which is solving by factoring. Um, so for this, we're always going to start by setting our equation equal to zero. And another tip to make these easier, just to save us some time, any time that we can make our uh, the coefficient of x squared positive, we should definitely do that. So whether we divide out a negative or I just add 6x squared um, to both sides, let's try to make our um, x squared term positive. Um, so this one we can factor using a GCF, so our GCF is 3x, leaving us with 2x plus 7. And from here, since it's fully factored, we can do the zero product property where we set each factor equal to zero and we solve. So we get x equals zero and x equals negative 7 halves. Um, so remember, x is still a factor. We still need to set it equal to zero when we're doing zero product property. Um, and please also remember um, here um, an alternative way to solve this. So from this step here, it is completely fine to actually divide both sides by 3 to reduce it down. So it's completely fine to do, um, to say 2x squared plus 7x. So from here to here, I divided both sides by 3. And then I can factor from here. So I can factor out an x. And then you'll see that I would get the same two solutions when I do zero product property. Please be aware that you absolutely cannot divide both sides by x. You cannot divide out a variable. Um, well, the main reason is we don't know what x is. And let's say x is 0, you can't divide by 0. Um, and also, if you're dividing out a variable, you are losing one of your answers. So never, ever, ever divide out a variable. If you would like, you can divide both sides by a uh, value that is a common factor to reduce it down. Um, let's do one more together. So again, let's make sure we can set our equation equal to zero. And then here we're going to factor. Um, so for this, you can use whatever method uh, works best for you. Um, I really like to use a method that I call the bottom-up method. Um, so it's kind of a trick method. The math is a little wonky, but it works um, for trinomials whose a value is greater than 1. If you don't want to use this method, you don't need to, but I'll show you how to do it. So we temporarily multiply our a value to our c value. And then here uh, we're going to factor this as if it were just a normal trinomial. So we have x plus 15 times x minus 2 equals 0. And then this is the step that a lot of people forget with this method, so please be careful. Since we multiplied by 6 at the beginning, we're going to divide by 6 at the end. And then here we're going to simplify our fractions when we can. So x plus uh, 5 thirds, or 5 halves, sorry, times x minus 1 third equals 0. And then this is why um, I call it the bottom up method. Anything left in the bottom or in your denominator, we're going to bring up in front of x. So this becomes 2x plus 5, and this becomes 3x minus 1. And you can always double check your answers really quickly to make sure um, that your factors uh, work. And now we are ready to do zero product property. Um, so here we get x equals negative 5 halves as one of our solutions and x equals 1 third as our other solution. And again, um, this is just one way to factor a trinomial like this. If you have a different method that works for you, um, any method is fine with me.
right, uh, please pause the video and give this one a try on your own. And again, we'll check your answer in just a few moments. Okay, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so you can see the first thing I did was I actually divided both sides by negative one um, to uh, create a positive A value. Then I factored out GCF, and then I factored this trinomial into two X minus one squared. If you have a binomial squared when you're doing zero product property, you only need to set up um, one equation to solve. So you get a single answer. Um, just to kind of give you a preview of things we'll talk about in previous units, we call this a double root. Um, because we had a factor squared. So it's a single answer. We have one answer. It's x equals one half, but we call this a double root. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick review on how to solve by completing the square. Um, so the first thing we're going, to, we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a binomial squared. Um, so in order to achieve that, we need to take this constant, this 13, we're going to move it to the other side. Um, because it's not completing our square, so I say let's just move it out of the way, so subtract it to the other side. And here we want to create a perfect square uh, trinomial. In order for us to do that, um, we need to first factor out any a value that is not 1, so x squared plus 5x, and now we can complete our square. So we use the little formula b over 2 squared to find the number, the magic number that completes our square. So it's 5 over 2 squared, which is 25 fourths. So we're going to add 25 fourths. But of course, we can't just add something to the left side of our equation without doing the same to the right, because we need to keep our equation balanced. So we need to say, what do we actually add to the right side of my equation? It looks like we added 25 fourths, but we actually added 25 fourths times 2, which is 25 halves. So I need to add 25 halves to the other side of our equation um, to keep it balanced. Now, this side of our equation, we can um, factor this into a binomial squared. So we have 2 times. And the trick for how to factor something like this, the number in your factor is always going to be your b value divided by 2. This is only for perfect square trinomials, so it's really only when you're completing the square, um, but it's a good trick to know to factor a trinomial like this. And then on the right side of my equation, I'm left with negative 1 half. This is negative 16 halves, or sorry, negative 26 halves plus 25 halves, so negative 1 half. And now I can finish solving by isolating my term being squared. So I'm going to isolate this completely. So I'm going to uh, divide both sides by 2. And then I'm going to take the plus or minus square root of both sides. Don't forget that plus or minus sign. So let's simplify uh, that radical before we finish solving. So plus or minus, uh, here we would get 1 half i. So remember the square root of negative 1 is i, and then the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. And then the last thing we need to do is just subtract 5 halves from each side. So x equals negative 5 halves plus or minus 1 half i. We can leave our answer like this, or we could even say x equals negative 5 plus or minus i over 2 means exactly the same thing. Um, either way is fine. Okay, um, so go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try on your own. We'll check your answer in just a few seconds. All right, go ahead and check here. And um, you can see here that I actually um, added x squared and subtracted 6x um, to create a positive x squared term. And then um, 9 is the number that completes our square. So this trinomial, trinomial becomes x minus 3 squared. And then from here, you can take the plus or minus square root of each side and then add 3. So here is our answer. All right, the last method we are going to review today is solving with the quadratic formula. Um, so remember, for this, uh, we need to start by setting our equation equal to 0. So we have 2x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. And then we're going to substitute our a, b, and c values into that quadratic formula. So we got x equals negative 
b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And now it's just a matter of simplifying. So here we get x equals positive 8 plus or minus the square root of 40 all over 4. So let's simplify our radical. Here we should get 2 root 10 all over 4. And since all three of these are divisible by 2, let's simplify a little bit more. It should be 4 plus or minus root 10 all over 2. If you would like to write your answer as x equals 2 plus or minus root 10 over 2, that is fine as well. Um, either way is perfectly acceptable. All right, so uh, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try on your own, and we'll check your answer in just a few seconds. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, make sure that you've simplified your radical completely. So we have the square root of the negative, which is why we have this imaginary number. This does become um, 2i root 26, and this we can simplify further to 1 plus or minus i root 26 all over 3. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about today um, is what's called the discriminant. And again, I alluded to this earlier in the lesson. Um, so the discriminant is from the quadratic formula, and it's that b squared minus 4ac. Yeah. And we can use the discriminant to help us determine how many and what type of answers to expect. So if our discriminant is less than zero, we're going to have two imaginary answers and no real answers. If our discriminant is equal to zero, um, we're going to have one answer, and if our discriminant is greater than zero, we're going to have two. And the reason for that is, well, if you think about it, the discriminant is under the square root sign in the uh, quadratic formula. So if your discriminant is negative, or we have a square root of a negative, so we get those two imaginary solutions. They always come in pairs because, well, we have that plus or minus in front. If your discriminant is equal to zero, then we have plus or minus zero, which is why we only have one answer, so we don't have those two different answers because it's just zero. And if your discriminant is anything positive, um, we'll just have two real answers. Okay, so we're just going to use our discriminant here really quick um, to figure out how many and what type of solutions to expect. So we're literally just doing b squared minus 4ac. So in this problem, if we do b squared minus 4ac, you can see that we get negative 20, so this tells us we'll get two imaginary solutions. Let's look at this next one. So here we have negative b or negative 5 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times 1. So here we get 33, so it's greater than 0, so that tells us we get two real solutions. Okay, let's try one more. And I did change um, this. If your note packet looks different, can you change this to a negative 2? Um, so let's do the discriminant again. So we have b squared minus 4 times a times c. So for this, you should get 0, which tells us we have one real solution. Okay, um, the last thing I have for you is a challenge problem. So I'd ask you to pause the video and give this one a try on your own. Um, you're actually going to derive the quadratic uh, formula by um, solving for x by completing the square. So give it a try and check your answers when you're ready. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, really, this first step is the most crucial one to having like a, a nice um, simple or relatively simple derivation. So if you divide um, both sides of your equation by a, it allows you to complete the square much easier. So I would definitely do that first. So that leaves you with b over ax plus c over a. Then move your constant, find that magic term. So um, the term that completes our squared is b squared over 4a squared. So add that on both sides. You can factor this. Remember the factor here is always your b value divided by 2. And then here I can combine these two terms. You have to multiply um, this by 4a over 4a, so you have a common denominator. Then you take the plus or minus square root of both sides. You can simplify your denominator. 
and then you can um, subtract, neg you subtract b over 2a to the other side, you'll see you have a common denominator here, so you can um, condense it into a single expression. Okay, uh, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.